Welcome, in this video we're going to take a look at how to deal with vertical springs and use conservation of energy to solve problems. Vertical springs are a, the trickiest type of springs, more tricky than horizontal because we have to deal with uh, both spring potential energy and gravitational potential energy. Alright, so what we've learned with gravitational potential energy is that we get to set the zero level, um, that reference level of zero gravitational potential energy wherever we want. Um, with spring potential energy, we don't have that freedom. We are required to put the zero level of spring potential energy at the unstretched or uncompressed length of the spring. So uh, here we've got uh, a spring that is initially uncompressed, uh, sitting at its rest position. Um, then we put uh, a ball on it, compress the spring, and let it go. And then that ball launches up to a certain height h. And so the question might be, uh, what height does the ball launch to? Um, so the first step is to set your zero levels for potential energy. Um, so let's do gravitational potential energy first. Uh, I always like to set my zero level for gravitational potential to be the lowest position of motion of an object. So I'm going to say UG is equal to zero joules right there when the spring is at its maximum compression. Okay, now we are not at liberty to set the zero level of our spring potential. It's got to be set wherever the rest position of the spring is. So this on my diagram is the zero level for the spring potential energy. Okay, and so uh, then we can see that uh, the delta x that we're concerned with, or in this case delta y, the compression of the spring is that right there. Uh, and then the height that the ball goes to is going to be this distance here. We'll call that h. Uh, and so let's say we're looking to find out what is the height that the ball goes to. All right. Um, so let's see here. Uh, let's identify what types of energy we're dealing with at what instance. So right here, um, before the ball is launched, then we have the spring is being compressed. Uh, past its zero level, or um, compressed from its rest position. So we've got spring potential energy initially. Uh, so U spring initial. Uh, we have no gravitational potential energy initially because that's where I set my zero level. That's handy. Uh, and then all the way up here, we are just dealing with gravitational potential energy because the object, the ball, gets launched straight up and it momentarily comes to rest. All right before it starts falling down. So we now know what types of energy we have. Initially, we have spring potential energy. Uh, and then finally, we have gravitational potential energy. So we can set those equal to each other. So what is our initial spring potential? It's 1 half the spring constant times my delta y squared. And then what is my gravitational potential? Finally, it's going to be m times g times that defined h that we have there. Okay, and so from here, we can solve for whatever we're being asked to solve for, in this case, h. Uh, we would then divide mg on both sides. Uh, we would have to know the spring constant. We'd have to know the mass of the ball. All right. Um, also, we could have give, been given the mass of the ball and the height it goes to and been asked to find the spring constant. So we could use this equation to do that as well. All right, so depending on what we're given, what we're asked to find, uh, the steps are the same here. You're going to identify your zero levels. You're in charge of the gravitational potential. You're not in charge of the spring potential. So identify those zero levels on the diagram. Figure out what kind of energy you have at the beginning, what kinds of energy you have at the end. Set them equal to each other. Solve for what you're being asked to solve for. Here we're going to take a look at another notorious physics problem, the bungee jumper. So we've got a bungee jumper of mass m, and they're strapped to a bungee cord of length l. Uh, let's also assume that the bungee cord has a uh, spring constant, an effective spring constant of k. Uh, they jump off the bridge, and one question that we could ask well, is how fast are they going the moment the bungee cord starts to stretch? Uh, and then the other question we could ask is, how far below the bridge do they actually go before they start to come back up? And we're going to see here we can switch the zero levels for gravitational potential energy to make things a little bit more convenient for us. Again, we're not an, in charge of where the zero level of spring potential is. All right. So uh, for the first question, let's say, how fast is the bungee jumper going the minute the cord starts to stretch? So setting my zero levels, let's go ahead and make uh, this the zero level of gravitational potential energy. 
So u g is equal to zero joules. And we're not in charge of where the spring potential is zero. What we can see here is this moment is where the bungee cord is unstretched, right? And so this is the zero level of spring potential energy as well. Okay, so we've set our zero levels and now we ask ourselves what kinds of energy does the system possess initially and what kinds of energy does it possess finally? So before the jump, bungee jumper uh, starts to go, they have no spring potential because the cord's not stretched. Uh, they have no kinetic energy because they're not moving yet and which means that it's all gravitational potential energy. So UG initial. And then when they're down here, the moment that bungee cord starts to stretch, it hasn't stretched yet, so there's no spring potential. We're at the zero level of gravitational potential, so the only type of energy they have right there is going to be kinetic energy, the final kinetic. So we would then set the initial gravitational potential energy equal to that final kinetic energy. So m times g times l in this case, because that's how far they are when they jump above that zero level of gravitational potential, is equal to come on pen right one half the mass times that final velocity squared uh, in this case the mass of the bungee jumper does cancel out because we're not dealing with spring potential anytime we got spring potential in there you got to be careful mass is not going to cancel uh, so we could solve for V with this equation right here so now let's solve the second problem and to do this uh, how far does the bungee jumper go down I'm gonna switch my zero level of gravitational potential energy I'm going to move my zero level of gravitational potential energy to be right here. UG is equal to zero joules. Because I want to solve for that delta Y. How far do they go from their starting position? All right. And so then I'm going to erase my zero level from the previous problem. Um, and I'm going to restate that the spring potential energy is zero joules right at that instant. All right. Uh, so, or right at that location, I should say. All right, so we need to use that in this problem as well, because when that bungee jumper is down here, that bungee cord is stretched. There is going to be a certain amount of spring potential energy. How much stretch is there? That's an important question. There's that much stretch in the bungee cord. That is not L, that is not delta Y. If you look, it's going to be delta Y minus L, the length of the bungee cord. Okay? So we've identified our zero levels. Now we need to identify the kinds of energy that we're dealing with in the different spots. So I'm going to take, again, this to be my initial position because I'm just dealing with gravitational potential energy. I could use this as my starting position um, because they would have, in this case, gravitational potential and kinetic energy, but it's easier just to deal with one type of energy. So let's just go ahead and say that before they jump is our starting position. We've already identified that there's gravitational potential energy there. And then this, uh, when the bungee jumpers at the bottom, is our final position. They're momentarily at rest. There's no kinetic energy. Uh, they're at the zero level of gravitational potential, my newly moved zero level. So there's no gravitational potential, which means all they have is spring potential energy down there which is great because now we're just setting equal uh, the gravitational potential energy at the top, the UG initial, is equal to U spring final. Just two types of energy. Lovely to deal with just two types of energy. So let's talk about the initial gravitational potential energy. Now the bungee jumper is a height of delta Y above that zero level of gravitational potential. So we're looking at MG delta Y is equal to the spring potential. That goes back to how much is the spring stretched by? It's stretched by delta Y minus L. So we're looking at 1 half K times delta Y minus L Ooh, squared. And what are we solving for here? Oh boy, we're solving for delta Y, which when we multiply that out, we're going to end up with a quadratic. And we're going to have to pick our favorite way of solving a quadratic. All right. Um, understanding that the algebra on an AP Physics C exam is not where you get your points. You get your points for setting things up. Uh, we set everything up correctly. We set the right energy equal to the right final energy. And uh, we put everything in correctly. So the algebra from here, uh, though daunting, is not worth a lot of points. So I'm not going to spend any time figuring it out. 
Um, if they gave us numbers here, I'd probably plug in numbers, I'd graph it on a calculator, and I'd look for the zeros of that parabola to give me my answer for the delta y, how far they go down. But these bungee jump questions are popular, and again, it goes back to set your zero levels, figure out what kind of energy it has at the start, what kind of energy the system has at the end, and set those energies equal to each other. Solve for what you're being asked to solve for. All right? Remember, you're not in charge of where the spring potential energy is zero. It's got to be zero at the unstretched slash uncompressed length of the spring. Okay? So even though I was able to change the gravitational potential location to zero, I'm not able to change that spring potential location. All right? That's it for now. Thanks.